Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video and today I'm doing a video on why I like Doctor Who the episode 42 from series 3 uh, like I don't get this but I find myself looking online that you know and finding out that a lot of people really don't like this story and I don't know, I, I think it's one of the stronger episodes in Series 3, it's probably maybe not the best story from Series 3 by any means, but it's definitely one of the stronger episodes from Series 3, it's definitely an episode I enjoy, I mean, it feels like what, if someone was to say to me, um, you know, what what is Doctor Who and, and, and that, or, you know, like, I have I've I know what Doctor Who is, but I've never really got into it, and that, and I had to recommend them an episode from, like, just the modern series, I'd probably recommend 42, and that, so, because it feels very quintessential Doctor Who, I mean, uh, it's ironic how I've just watched 42, um, before this video, of course, uh, to sort of do an overview of it, and why I like it, you know, but, it's ironic how I've watched this, and yet, a while back, in terms of the classic series episodes, <coughs> excuse me, that I've recently um, uh, watched, I watched um, uh, Robots of Death, and they're quite similar, really. Um, obviously, a lot more people will probably say that Robots of Death is a brilliant story, whereas way, excuse me, way less people seem to be saying that about 42. 42 seems to be an episode that a lot of people don't like, which is odd to me because, again, it's um, it's Chris Chibnall's debut story, so meaning that it's his first story in Doctor Who. Um, and, yeah, and I think he does a good job with what he wants to do, really. I think uh, after watching uh, his Torchwood episodes as well, or I, I've watched, I, I've at least watched his Torchwood work, uh, and or episodes once, uh, uh, each of sorts, um, I haven't watched them recently or anything, but I'm just bringing this up that, um, both in Torchwood and in this episode in particular, I feel like Chris Chibnall is very good at, um, giving supporting cast, or the supporting characters and or cast, um, a fairly decent amount of stuff to do, which I think in Doctor Who in particular with a, a such a short time frame of only like 42, 45, 45 roughly minutes to play around with um, and that, then, you know, that can be challenging and I think this episode might actually be 42 minutes, hence the reason why it's called 42 because it's supposed to be one of those, it's one of those first episodes in the new series where it's sort of, you know, live in the sense that, you know, when you watch it, it's the time is dwindling down as the episode is going on sort of thing so you definitely have that sort of threat there and that jeopardy and the reason why I have parallels to Robots of Death is because both episodes are on like a space craft of sorts you know one's on a space miner the other's on a spaceship you know they're both quite sort of well okay Robots of Death probably has the way more elegant sort of interior design Whereas 42 goes the more sort of harsh reality and gritty realism and that and the more decrepit sort of we're just throwing this together sort of thing. But I think at the end of the day they're both sort of just here's an interior design, you know, think of it what you will, you know, uh, and that, you know. Like, I, I don't think, Doctor Who, I think Russell T Davis said in um, a BBC Confidential thing, maybe of this series as well, that, you know, um when 42 was up uh, and that and the commentary oh, on the behind the scenes uh, confidential thing he um you know he made a good point about comparing Doctor Who to Star Trek you know Star Trek's very much you know glamorous you know this is the future and glamorous space liners and whereas Doctor Who's never been that in in its past you know it's always been a very gritty realism and even when it's in the future you know it's it's always usually you know this this might actually happen and that you know um we're not just going to glam it up because oh the future's going to be positive it might not be you know um and that which is very british to think that the future isn't going to be positive let's be honest but um you know and again yeah the supporting cast it's one of those rare times where i feel like the 
supporting cast, the people around uh, both David Tennant and Freeman Rajma as the 10th Doctor and Martha Jones, uh, the people around actually feel quite fleshed out, quite interesting really, um, and that, which I don't feel like we get often in Doctor Who. In Doctor Who we very rarely get very fleshed out side characters, which is a shame really, because um, you know, I think in that respect, that's one thing that I think Star Wars has over Doctor Who, the fact that, you know, Star Wars always feels like a, a living, breathable, um, you know, world with more than just, you know, Luke, Leia and Han Solo in it and Chewbacca, you know, it always feels like, a, a, you know, a living, breathable galaxy, whereas with Doctor Who, it always just feels like the Doctor and the Companion and then that's it, really, and a few side characters but that's about it whereas here it actually feels like yeah as I say like the side characters have fleshed out um you know David Tennant gives a, a stellar performance here um as the 10th Doctor he finally in his run uh, thus far is rather um you know he, he finally plays this sort of um role or the the role that he's playing in this is uh, dictates that he needs to be rather vulnerable and he plays that to a T and it's it's really interesting it really i think that's why i really like this story because it pivots it almost says okay we're done now with the whole you know 10th doctor complaining about rose thing you know you're the new companion, here are the keys, here we are on an adventure. And it's, again, quintessential Doctor Who. It starts with the TARDIS going through the time vortex, they immediately get a distress signal, you're immediately on a random spaceship, you're thrown into the flaming pits of the spaceship that's about to hit into the sun, you know. And, uh, and I think the CGI for uh, 2007 really holds up, to be honest. I don't think it looks that bad, personally, myself, but... Um, but then again, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I grew up with this episode of Doctor Who, this era of Doctor Who, so maybe I'm just, there's nostalgia goggles there, I don't know, but I think he looks not too bad, really. Um, you know, everything looks like what it's supposed to look like, and looks as believable as possible, really. Um, you know, the villain's fairly decent, although I am a bit confused as to how we got two of those, you know, Burn With Me dudes. That always confused me, because uh, I don't get how he infected the other person, because that's never really shown. Um, and also, yeah, why didn't he burn that person? Instead of burning him, he infects him, clearly, or somehow infects him, and then he becomes another burn with me type character, dude. That always confused me. I really love the message about the whole, you know, the idea that, you know, that son was alive, and that trying to scoop out some of it, to uh to fuel the ship was actually hurting it and that's why it attacked the crew or infected some of the crew because obviously it was an alive thing so um but yeah and again as i was saying like david tennant gives a a stellar performance being vulnerable he gives this sort of you know he's conflicted between the sun that's possessed him and himself and that and he you can clearly see that you know when he's switching between like you know Martha you've got to quickly hurry up and get me to the stasis room Arr! oh my god Arr! you know burn with me and all that and then he's like you know switching you know you can you can tell you know it's 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 black and white there's no t too many minor nuances which although sounds like a bad thing it's not because primarily Doctor Who is a family show and so for kids and uh, and that and young teens and, and, and kids and that you know you need that big contrast and that and I guess as well you can tell that he's vulnerable or that there's real sort of um, sort of danger and, and, and substance in terms of the threat in this one because the Doctor, he, David Tennant's Doctor even mentions you know um, there's this thing when I die that happens and so you as an audience at this point we already know what regeneration is or we should do anyway if you've watched Christopher Eccleston's although I know a lot of people started with David Tennant so some people might not even know what regeneration is yet but still it's mentioned um, you know and, he, and he's like you know I, I can do this thing when I die and, and that and then she's just like no no that's stop that's not gonna happen I'm gonna save you you know you, you helped me you saved me I'm gonna return the favour you know and it just really sort of solidifies their uh, relationship for lack of a better term their dynamic their rapport with each other you know the doctor finally feels I, I, I want to say more 
you know, f willing to open up to Martha, you know, because yeah, sure, he lost Rose, Rose, uh, Rose even, and that. But again, I think this is quintessentially the point where it sort of the series sort of, sort of pivots. Yes, we've got more of the sort of story arc stuff in the background as well, which is really nicely handled. It's not really ham-fisted. It doesn't drag the episode down. It doesn't drag it down into the mud and say, look, all this exposition and meh, story arc, story arc, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Stephen Moffat. But, you know, it just subtly is in the background. You know, you got Martha's mum uh, trying to talk to her a handful of times and try and, you know, decrypt where she might be and whether or not the doctor's there. You've got the whole vote Saxon thing. You've got the, you know, the wo the woman and that behind her with the earphones and those other creepy dudes and all that and, you know, the whole vote Saxon thing and that's really nicely planted there and as an audience, excuse me, as an audience you're really con concerned about what the hell that, that all is about, you know, or what that is all about. Um, you know, just really good setting with the derelict and decrepit spaceship and, and that, you know. Martha's really good on top form. There's quite a few deaths. There's that bit where one of the villain people, like, has his hands on that guy and then there's smoke coming out of him and that, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. You know, <coughs> you know, it's, it's, it's quite an intense story as well. You know, there's, there's music and it's very fast paced. The music keeps up with it. It's directed really well. Um, you know, uh, as I say, the side characters are really good. Um, you know, I think the only, well, one thing that is a bit weird, looking back on it now in retrospect, the TARDIS interior is so small. <laughs> And <laughs> that in contrast to like, you know, Matt Smith's and Capaldi's TARDISes uh, and their interiors. But yeah, um, yeah, I just, I really don't get why 42 is uh, uh, highly regarded as not a good episode or, you know, the main consensus between or amongst fans seems to be that uh, this episode's a really bad one when I actually really like it. So yeah, um... Yeah, and I mean, Martha gets a TARDIS key as well, which, I'll be honest, I thought she got the TARDIS key in the Lazarus experiment, but maybe this is the first episode she gets the TARDIS key. So yeah, things are moving forward, you know. The past is being buried a bit more here, um, and they've just been through something quite troubling and, and a hurdle and quite an intense emotional, you know, physically and emotional sort of adventure and all uh, you know, obstacle course of sorts, you know, and so this does make them more, both of them more willing to be open with each other, um, and that, and you can tell the Doctor's hesitant to do that because of the whole Rose thing, but also because of the Time War thing maybe, and Rose, and, you know, just things that have gone in the past and that, you know, and so he is finally opening, but it's it, it took basically being possessed by a, by a son, by a living son, for him to finally open up, which uh, you could say about a lot of um, other people in life, I guess. <laughs> that, that, that might take them, uh, that might be the thing to take them to uh, finally open up. But yeah, um, yeah, an all-round really good Doctor Who story, you know, um, you know, sort of, I was going to say base under siege, but I guess spaceship under siege, I guess, you know, story. So a well-earned 8 out of 10 for me, you know. It's it's a really good story, you know. And an episode that I really like, um, you know, both, as I said, David Tennant's Doctor and uh, Martha and the side characters are good and, and, and I like them. And yeah, it's a fun watch. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate and subscribe.